Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to All About Canadian Books, and welcome to 2023. I am so thrilled that this is my first interview, and even more thrilled that I'll be chatting with a dynamic mother-daughter writing duo, Allie and Hesa Christensen. Behind every book is a fascinating story and two and talented writers. Today, we've got two. Ready? Let's kick things off here. Allie and Hesa Christensen discovered their affinity for working together when they were in-house writers for a film production company. They have made the leap from the silver screen to the printed page. And Stealing John Hancock is their first novel, and it's published by Ravenstone. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Allie and Hesa. Hi, it's really wonderful to be here with you. Yeah, thanks for having us. I am thrilled, thrilled. I keep saying that, but I really am. <laughs> and look forward to getting to know both of you a little better. Are you ready for a series of questions? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it, it's, it's going to be fun. <laughs> so first off, Allie, what was it like to live in a cabin in the woods? Oh, um, people haven't really asked about that. I'm <laughs> kind of glad you brought that up. It was um, it was a challenging life, and without you know any amenities, no electricity or anything, and it was in a drafty log cabin, and um, and I had two babies there, and we were subsistence farming, and and it was a, it was quite an experience. <laughs> Oh my yeah. goodness. Wow. <laughs> and I, I had gone there directly from law school. So it was quite a change. <laughs> yeah. How long did you do that? Um, I guess it was five or six years. Wow. And um, it was the early 70s. And um, and there were quite a few of us uh, kind of hippie types that were going back to the land. So it was, uh, there was a bit of a community spread out of a wide area and we supported each other and we learned how to, you know, live in the wilderness. Oh my gosh. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> there was no heat, no electricity, churning their own butter and yeah, we grinding did, their own we flour. Had, we had bees for honey. We tapped trees for maple syrup. We had a cow for milk chickens for eggs and we had an acre in garden stored our food in a root cellar and yeah oh my goodness. Wow. you could write a book about that <laughs> and she should <laughs> yeah. that's right that's right okay hey so you ready yes <laughs> what made you decide to do an eco an echo challenge in fiji with your brothers so I actually just saw it on TV. And so the Eco Challenge Adventure Race is you use different forms of non-motorized transportation to navigate your way by map and compass through all sorts of terrain. So in the race we did, it was jungle trekking, whitewater kayaking, mountain biking, rappelling. We had to build our own raft and navigate a waterway by that once. And it's their multi-day races and you have to make it from checkpoint to checkpoint in a certain amount of time or you get eliminated. And we, I think we lasted six days in it and we slept an average of 45 minutes a night. Oh. And we were pushed to such an extreme that at times I actually started hallucinating um, from lack of sleep and physical exertion, but you just keep going. And the thing that sort of attracted to me to it was just wondering if I could do it. You know, I just saw it on TV and I thought, wow, that's crazy and maybe kind of fun sounding. And I wonder if I could. And then my first phone call was to my older brother, Tove. And I said, hey, have you heard of the Eco Challenge? And he said, yeah, um, I would just watch it on TV. And I said, do you want to apply to do it next year? And he said, sure. And that was, <laughs> <laughs> he took no convincing at all. And then we um, called up our younger brother, Hayden, next, and same conversation. And he took a little more convincing. He, at first, he was like, are you guys crazy? And we're like, no, just watch it. See what you think. And I think it took us a couple of days to talk in, into it. And, and then he was on board. And then he was fully on board. And we had to get certified in all sorts of things to do it. So we were up on the Ottawa River getting our whitewater certification. And 
um, yeah, just learning all sorts of things beforehand too, is months of preparation and my crazy, my crazy kids. <laughs> yeah. You say you're crazy kids, but at the same time, my parents decided while we were doing this, that they would do their own adventure race at home and do it yourself. And they were living in Thornhill at the time. And didn't you guys bike to Toronto as part of it? Oh yeah. We biked downtown. We from Thornhill. And <laughs> yeah. So they were doing their own, their own craziness in support of us. So, oh gosh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, what were some of your favorite books that you read as a child? Oh, well, I was mainly big into classics. And my favorite book as as a, you know, a 10 year old was um, Ivanhoe. Actually, I loved medieval adventure tales. And, um, and I would say that the mysteries that really intrigued me, I loved Agatha Christie and especially Miss Marple. And uh, so I, I like I like the classics from, you know, uh, from Jane Austen to you know, Herman yeah. Melville and yeah. And one amazing thing about having her as a mother is like her love of books, she really shared with us mm-hmm. and she, her children, she has four children and um, she always read to us and she like, sure, children's picture books and all the usual, but also the classics as well. And we just... Oh cozy up yeah. and she'd read and yeah and one thing I would do for every birthday for my four children would be to give them a book there's a book every birthday yeah a book of birthday and she's still <laughs> continuing on with her grandchildren now a yeah. book of birthday and I still get a book of birthday <laughs> I look forward to it every year yeah that's fabulous yeah. I love it <laughs> I love it okay Lisa what advice do you have for people who are traveling on a yacht during a hurricane <laughs> so, one thing is don't let your mother know <laughs> <laughs> so my husband is a yacht captain and um I have spent quite a bit on of time on yachts because of this and I have done 10 Atlantic crossings with him and the the crew of the yachts tend to find the Atlantic crossings a little bit boring because not a lot happens during it And so it was a time when I could come on as a crew member and just do whatever work they would give me, like scrub the deck or whatever grunt work there was, because I had no real skills. And um, I just thought it was great to get this extra time with my husband. And our first crossing was so idyllic. It was the, this was across the Atlantic Ocean from the Mediterranean to the Caribbean. And it was like a pond the entire way. And we stopped in the middle to go swimming and um, there's not much in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, it was dead smack in the middle. And some whales heard us and came over curious about what we were doing there. And then one of the people on the boat had this idea, I wonder what would happen if I jumped in, if they would get scared and leave or not. And they, they stuck around. And so then we all jumped in and then we were swimming with whales in the middle of the Atlantic and it was just glorious. So I was saying to my husband, I'm like, I don't know what you guys complain about, about these crossings. This is the best thing ever. I'm back for the next one. And the next one, we ended up in a hurricane with side panels being ripped off the boat and having to steer into each wave. And if you ask for a bit of advice, when I woke up that morning, so I, we were, I knew we were in a big storm and I say woke up, I wasn't really sleeping. I lay down on the bed, but you would just fly up off the bed and then down again. And I remember thinking, huh. and the boat was making all these strange noises, just the wind howling and things creep, creaking and you can hear stuff just getting torn off the boat. And I thought, huh, we might sink. Mm-hmm. And I thought, what should I do? And I thought I should dress for being in the water and so I put on like the best I could think of of survival gear like dressing in layers thinking of things that would like wool retain warmth when wet and we didn't end up sinking but uh but that would be my advice dress for the ship going down if you end up in a hurricane and it was very hard to dress because you just get thrown into one wall and then the next and yeah oh my god were you sick I was extremely seasick as I think there were maybe 18 crew members on the boat at the time. And 
most of them were too. So I had the weakest sea legs for sure, but most of them were sick as well. And there were a few people who weren't, but then they had to continue working through extreme seasickness because as we took on water and we took on a lot of water, there were two engines on the, on the boat and we kept losing engines. It's good you didn't lose both. Yes, because you have to steer into each wave because if a wave at in those kind of seas hit you at the side, it will capsize you. So there were many times that we were seconds away from getting an engine running before the next one went down just in time to steer into a wave. It was crazy. Oh my gosh. And the engineer's presence after <laughs> Yeah. I'm sitting here and my mouth is wide open the whole time you're talking. I'm like, I have to shut it. <laughs> so being a very inexperienced sailor, I was of no use at all during the hurricane. And I thought, well, the best thing I can do is just stay out of everybody's way. But it was amazing to see what some of these people could do, how their skills just clicked in and they rose to the challenge and did whatever was necessary. How they stay focused. Yeah, it was an incredible focus. And, and a lot of them were sick while they were, do, while they were doing oh. this. So, yeah. Yeah. Gosh, you you saw the two extremes, like the the gentle side of Mother Nature. Yes. And yeah. <laughs> oh, this is what I can throw at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, um, Ali, of yeah. all your accomplishments, what are you most proud of? Oh, that's easy. My children, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I have four oh. amazing children, all just incredible in their own rights. And I'm just so proud of them. Yeah. Oh, now you're going to make me cry. <laughs> yeah, I'm get started. We'll, we'll have a moment. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> She's honestly the most amazing mom. She was always so involved our whole lives and so encouraging and supportive of everything we did. So, yeah. Let's change the topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> um, hey, so what is your favorite, the, the most favorite adventure you've been on? We've got a taste of a few of them, but do you have a favorite? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. She's been on a lot. Yeah. So I've always done a lot of sort of extreme sports and been sort of um, drawn to, to things outdoorsy. Right now, what I'm enjoying the most, and this won't sound as an extreme an adventure, is I'm just loving backcountry camping and going with my daughter and my husband. And um, we just go, we stay in Ontario and we go to Killarney or Algonquin and we have our canoe and we just paddle off and see what we can find. Our last trip was in August and um, we were in Algonquin then and we had a couple of moose that came like right near where we were and we just sat in our canoe and we watched them for a couple of hours and we ended up going, you don't really go too close to a moose, you don't mess with a moose, but they're such extraordinary creatures and we were on land, you know, not far from where they were and just sitting in awe watching them. And that would it was be a good incredible. children's book title. What, what's that? Don't mess with the moose. Don't mess with the moose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you heard it here on All About Canadian Books. Don't mess with the moose. <laughs> yeah. So that's what that's what I'm loving. And another backcountry camping trip this summer, which was off in Killarney. My daughter is 15. She was 14 at the time. And we took her best friend as well. And um, both of them are very experienced in the wilderness because they've both been doing all this stuff every year their entire lives. And for the first time ever, they were at their own campsite, which was a 45 minute paddle from ours. And so we got to sort of see them go off on their own. And they did a full day hike, uh, navigating on their own by map and um, climbing up to the top of Silver Peak that's there. And, and they came down, I mean, it was after sunset my husband and I were like well is it a good idea to let them do this but <laughs> like well they have the skills they know how to orient where they are they know what to do if they encounter a bear they you know so it's just amazing to then see your kid sort of develop that confidence in those skills and to be able to enjoy okay. sort of the stillness and the beauty and the power that's out there in nature and you've invited the family. Oh, yes. yes. And so my husband and I just this Christmas. So the rest of my family doesn't really do this sort of thing. And we had the idea of inviting them to come with us next time, but to go somewhere not very far in um, as we have from, well, the youngest is seven and the oldest is 70 
something, I don't know. <laughs> um, and just to invite everyone out and to give everybody like a little taste of that. And I'm really looking forward to having- my... Everyone was really excited about Everybody it. Everybody was, yeah. 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 And I think my dad will really like it too. I mean, there's, there's something for everyone if you want to fish or you want to swim. But my, I'm most excited about having my niece and nephew come, which will yeah. both be eight at the time. And that'll sort of be their introduction yeah. to the back country. And I just, I hope they love it. Oh, wow. How lucky. I wish I was in your family. <laughs> you <laughs> you can come too. Of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're invited. You cool things. <laughs> um, just a couple more questions, ladies. Um, Allie, when you write a book, do you find that you're writing with a movie in mind? Well, this was our first novel, mm -hmm. Stealing John Hancock, and it started out as a screenplay. Oh. So um, we then, we quickly switched to wanting to write a novel because there were themes and character development that we really wanted to explore to a greater depth than you can in a screenplay. So, um, so we'll see that we're we're writing a book now that has not started as a screenplay. Yes, that's the first time so, that's starting as yeah, yeah with that in mind. Yeah. yeah. But we we I think we write very visually. Like we still um you know see the scenes as they unfold and 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 um, develop the characters within that environment. Yeah. yeah, you can you can certainly tell that you write visually because I know the whole time I was reading it, it just felt like it was a movie unraveling before my eyes. I really like that. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Um, hey, Sa, what aspect of screenwriting do you enjoy the most? Um, well, I, I suppose it's sort of what you just mentioned there which is you said that our book for you was very visual and moving over to novels. That was the one thing I was worried about giving up is because you actually, I think you have more tools to work with in a novel than you do in a screenplay. There's more room for internal monologue and exposition and all these amazing tools, but in a screenplay, you have the visual <laughs> and it's really nice to have the visual. It's very nice to, yeah. I would like to add, I know yeah. it's Hayes' question. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> that um, we actually, for this book, we actually um, went on the paths of our characters. Like we, we, we went, like we went from Port Perry to downtown Toronto. We went where there's a chase scene. We went through the in, in, entire chase scene and where that we created different, um, for example, one of the characters um, dwellings is quite unusual and we spent time in that area. So we actually visualize and have actually experienced it as we've gone. We like to see everything and also to like say, what does it sound like in this neighborhood? And you know, what, what are all the sensory aspects of being in a place? Place. so yeah and plus it's yeah. fun it's a fun type of field trip yeah oh, and and Hesa was 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 just in Barbados where part of the story takes place and she actually went and traveled the, our, the yeah <laughs> where everywhere our character went I, I used to live in Barbados but we just went back there on holiday and we went and visited all the places our character went and I took some pictures too and I was like oh remember he stood here and this is what he would have been looking at oh that's incredible there's one scene in the book I won't do a spoiler but I'm thinking I want I'm where there was a fire uh-huh yes and I'm like oh no you didn't recreate that did you <laughs> No, no, but well, yeah. I don't want to give anything away, but yeah. that locate that location yeah. minus all the decor, I don't want to give anything away here. Yeah, yeah. Was actually fashioned after my first house in Toronto or yeah. my, it was a loft. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. So it we, we were picturing that building. We had a very specific place we were picturing. So yeah. we do like the visual element when oh we're writing gosh. whatever we're writing and just to bring up the other main location is that I grew grew up quite a bit in New York so yeah was very familiar with 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 those settings also yeah oh so oh. fun <laughs> <laughs> all right so Heisha and Allie thank you it has been an absolute pleasure getting to know you a little better <laughs> thank you it's been lots of fun yes it has yes and for Thank our you so viewers, much, Crystal. Oh, it, it's a pleasure, an absolute pleasure. And for viewers, please don't go anywhere because Heisha and Ali will be back to discuss the story between their debut novel.
stealing John Hancock. Links down below in the description box if you'd like to purchase a copy. And there'll also be links to Ali and Haisha's website so we can learn even more about them. And yeah, <laughs> goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>